Today, I have important news for Ryzen owners. Cheaper AM5 boards are coming, Intel's new GPU beats the 4080 at this, and terrible news for AMD. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD recently revealed a total of 31 new vulnerabilities affecting various CPUs over the years, including Epic and even Ryzen processors. Luckily, only three of them affect consumer products like Ryzen, which means a whopping 28 specifically target their Epic server chips. This isn't too much of a surprise given AMD has been gaining traction in the server world. With that said, out of the three that affect consumer products, one is of high severity, one is medium, and one is low. So at least two are fairly important. As far as the vulnerabilities themselves, they affect either the BIOS or the AMD Secure Boot Loader, and they span a pretty wide range of products. Products, from a number of desktop Ryzen CPUs to Threadripper and even a ton of Ryzen mobile parts. Under each product, AMD lists the AGISA code that includes the mitigations, but it's up to the OEMs to actually issue the BIOS updates for the mitigation, which means you'll have to go to your motherboard manufacturer or system builder's website to get the BIOS that was built from the listed AGISA code. Unfortunately, we don't have any information on whether the mitigations will have any performance penalties like we saw with Meltdown and Spectre, and whether you're willing to take the risk of waiting to find out or not is entirely up to you. Either way, it's interesting to see seemingly more vulnerabilities begin to hit AMD. As Tom's Hardware mentions, AMD was known for having fewer vulnerabilities than Intel, but was that because AMD had more secure processors or that Intel CPUs simply had more market share? As AMD gains more market share, I guess we'll find out. Regardless, a big thanks to the security experts and researchers who find these issues before scammers and hackers can. And if you like problem solving like this, or you just love computers in general, learn all about both with today's sponsor. Brilliant, the online learning platform that was made to teach the STEM field, and that includes computer science. Whether it's computer science fundamentals to programming and even quantum computing, Brilliant has it all. But the main thing that really helps them stand out is that they teach you by getting you to do it yourself. That means no lectures, memorizing a bunch of formulas, tons of reading, or anything like that. Brilliant very quickly gets you in there to basically get your hands dirty. Even if it's something very basic at first, they get you doing stuff which means you learn the real concepts behind all of those formulas. But that's just why I love it. You can actually try it for free yourself when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 of you who sign up will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. So check them out today. Next up for today, I have some great news for anyone hoping to buy a Ryzen 7000 CPU, but are turned off by those high board prices, not to mention their requirement for DDR5 memory. In a new filing at the EEC, Gigabyte lists multiple new motherboards. Specifically, they're preparing boards with a new A620 chipset, so lower-end motherboards with an AM5 socket. Of course, traditionally, AMD's 20 moniker takes away overclocking capabilities, but given Ryzen 7000 doesn't overclock all that much anyway, it may not matter to you. It'll likely also include fewer USB ports, no PCI Express 5.0, etc. But I think it'll be interesting to see how much cheaper these will be. AMD hasn't announced the chipset yet, but they could be speeding up its release to get cheaper boards on the market. All I can say is fingers crossed. Next up, we have a really interesting comparison between Intel's A770, AMD's 7900 XT, and Nvidia's 4080. For those who don't know, Microsoft's Direct Storage 1.1 is out, and it's set to seriously drop game load times by using the GPU to decompress assets. Well, a new benchmark was developed to test the speed of GPU's decompression algorithms, and PC Games Hardware used the benchmark for some testing. As you can see, every GPU was much faster at transferring and decompressing data than CPUs. But surprisingly, when comparing the GPUs themselves, in every test, Intel's lower-end ARC A770 beat out the other two cards. In fact, when using PCI Express 4.0, the 7900 XT was 13% slower than the A770. What's wild is that apparently Direct Storage 1.1 can make load times go from 5 seconds to as little as half a second. So we're talking a big reduction in wait times between starting a game and actually being able able to play it. I just can't wait for games to support it. 
And lastly for today, we have a huge update on AMD's RX 7900 XTX issues. As a quick recap, some users who purchased AMD's reference design 7900 XTX GPU have found the card getting temps as high as 110 degrees Celsius before thermal throttling and lowering performance. AMD eventually issued a statement claiming that they will be RMAing the cards with this issue. As for what was wrong, Der Bauer found that it seemed to be an issue with the card's vapor chamber. And in the last update, during an interview with PC World, Scott Herkelman confirmed that it is the vapor chamber, but that it only represents a very small percentage of cards, and that they have GPUs on hand for RMAs. Well, in a new story by Igor's lab, that doesn't seem to be the case. According to the report, AIB partners are reporting between 9 to 11 percent of cards are being RMA'd because of this issue, which is a huge number, but it actually gets even worse, as according to the article, system integrators and PC manufacturers are seeing failure rates of quote well over 10 percent and that makes sense because manufacturers are doing their own testing before putting them in systems so they don't get an rma back themselves and they would obviously do more testing than most individuals with their own card plenty of owners likely don't even know it's an issue to test now all of this culminated in the fact that amd is apparently out of cards and they don't know when they're going to get more in a recent email to igor because he's currently in the rma process of his own 7900 XTX, AMD states, quote, At the moment, we are not able to replace your card as we do not have stock available in our warehouses. Not only that, but they don't have an estimated date for when stock will be replenished. Luckily, they do offer him a refund, but in the end, this is really bad news for AMD. To have such a big issue that they've run out of cards is a big deal. Of course, remember that it's only the made by AMD reference design, so third-party 7900 XTX design should be completely fine. Still, this definitely isn't a good look. So while that does it for today, is your 7900XDX having issues? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.